Good afternoon, everyone. It's Rachel here. Now, I have plunged myself into darkness because the sun is streaming in, so I've had to lower the blind and I've got the lights on. Otherwise, it was just blinding. So um, I thought if I don't do my video now, I won't get it done. So I wanted to show you, I've been experimenting. So I did that. I finished that bit off there and I really like it, um, how that turned out. And then um, I'm just do, working on a little bit here. I'm not going to do it all because that would just take forever. But I am going to do a little bit of a few highlights here and there. So I'll show you how I'm approaching that. And then I wanted to show you what I'm doing here um, with the center of these berries here. I'm adding little beads with a knot so that they're kind of wobbly like that. And they're not flat rather than just stitching them in flat and they've got these little knobbly bits so I've got my perle oh I hope my um, ring light is not on screen just oh no I don't think it is I'll bring it back over here there we go okay sorry if there's shadows but this is the only way I'm going to get my video done today right let's move that over there okay so um, I've got my perle cotton it's number eight and I've doubled it over because I tried it single um, stranded and my knot wasn't big enough and my beads could just pull off so eventually they would fall off whereas this way I get a nice big knot I did a quilters knot so I'll show you when I do the next one I grab a bead now you must remember to grab your bead first on your needle I have a needle that they these beads fit through I go down into my fabric so you might you'd like to use this idea if you're doing your fancy flowers too and there we go it's as easy as anything Easy peasy. So there we go. And then I just end it off. That's the only annoying thing you have to keep ending off. And I'm as I'm going to be gluing this fairly securely onto my base here, um, I'm not too worried about securing it. I'll move that out of the way. So I think in this one, I'll probably only fit three. So quilt is not pointy end of your needle, bottom the eye, where your eye, the bottom end of your needle, you put the tail down, hold it on your needle. I'm wrapping it around twice, one, two, and then just slide it down between your thumb and your forefinger. Bring it down. Pull your knot tight. Oh, that one's a bit of a messy knot. Got to pull it tight. There we go. Pull it tight because you don't want it to come undone. And then snip. I don't, you can leave it long or short. I'm snipping mine quite close to my knot because I think there's enough sticking up in the air. And then I am just grabbing my bead, going down. And there you have it. And I'm just going to end it off and then do another one. We'll see if I need three or five. I have stabbed myself a few times, so I have a few war wounds, should we say. And as this is not really a writing journal as such, I feel like you can have as many bumpy bits as you want. So did my quilt is not, pull it tight. I'm snipping it now. You could snip it afterwards, but it's easier to do it now. Grab my bead. I have to talk to myself to remember the steps, otherwise I skip them. Try to get the nice um, full beads. Some beads are um, sort of wonky and they don't look complete to me. Yeah, I think three in this one is enough. And that is done. Now we'll go and do a bit of a leaf. I also couldn't see what I was doing. This, I mean, it was so bright. It was full sun in here. And the husband will be home in a minute. And then I'll be distracted. I'll have to go off and see what he's up to. So that's that. Okay, and I'm really happy I did embroider those. It's sort of... Um, gives them a bit more colour. I might I might decide to do a bit of green here and there in my leaves as well. I was thinking, you know, a little seed stitch all around here would be really nice too. But am I going crazy? I don't know. What does everyone think? I'll probably do it by the time you give me an answer anyway. So I've got a cruel, a cruel needle here with a nice big eye, but it's very sharp. But this is actually, I'm surprised, this is an upholstery fabric. It's lovely to stitch through. It's really nice to stitch through. It's not um, overly thick. 
It is thick, but it's not tough. That's what I'm trying to say. So what I've been doing here, it's a bit messy, but I've been doing short and long stitch. I could then decide to come in in these mid-tones here and choose a green and do a mid-tone. But I thought I'd just do a little bit of the, um, the lighter colour here and there just to, it's kind of hard to see because the light's reflecting on it. Um, just to see where, you know, like what do I want to do on there. So I feel like I should do this bit up here. Let's move our little bobbly beads over. So I'm just going to come up. I'm just going to do really messy, random stitching here. And I'm using Appleton wool. I like that. And it's also a nice way you get coverage fairly quickly. I'm just making it up as I go, which is my favorite way to be. Although sometimes I do mess up. If you mess up, you just, it's not like um, painting um, that you, you sort of have to do layers upon layers to cover it up. You just snip and pull out. That is how you fix it. So how is everyone today? I hope you're well. This is such a fun project. So um, I know some people were shocked at me ripping up my documents I'm sorry maybe not not the videos for you um, I will say that in Italy these the councils and the libraries are full of documents and they are quite often in terrible condition oh I know I was going to bring them up oh, I even found in the bundle of documents that I got from my dear friend um, that they had used antique documents as book covers I've got them I need to show you guys I have to see what to do with them I want to see I wanted to see what they might be like scanned I really need I might go down I might pause the video um, and go down and get them and show you I had intended to do that and between stitching on beads and turning on the camera I have forgotten but anyway what I'm saying is I know some people are shocked and horrid, horrified at what I do, but honestly, I feel like um, they're being saved because the Italians couldn't care less about them. And I have had so many documents that are full of mold and I've had to rip up because, I mean, literally, they, get, they, they were so powdery and gross that got down your throat. That's how bad they were. See, just making it up. And that was quick. You see, we just did a little, little ch chitter chatter and it's done. So we'll just end that off. And as I said, I'm not going to do all of it because I don't want to cover up all of the beautiful fabric. I just want to do little bits here and there just to create interest. I think we'll close the beads. That would be a disaster if they flipped everywhere. We'll put them back in their little home. I'm probably not going to add any more beads, I don't think. Now, let's have a look. Sometimes it's hard to decide. Um, where do you want to go and stitch? I might stitch this one here. Oh, there was a bead there. Oh, well, just chuck it over there. Just do a chuckaroo. I mean, all this work for the cover. It's going to be glued to an old, gross file folder. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited. My mum, my mum, she started. She watched, actually, I emailed her the link to the video because otherwise she wouldn't have watched it because she watches the sewing videos, but she's not a, she doesn't make junk journals. So, um, but anyway, she fancied making one of these. And so she is right into it. She's very excited about um, embroidering her fabric. And I can tell you, it'll be amazing. We once bought this fabric, um, it was this type, but it was a bit not quite as strong as this. It was it was quite expensive, not as expensive as these. We bought it at the market in my town from people that sell. Um, it wasn't old or anything, but it was like, um, you know, end of line sort of fabric. And it was beautiful. It had a beautiful um, pattern um, on it. And mum embroidered and beaded it. It was blue and gold, the colour. The background was this sort of colour and then the the design I might have a piece of it somewhere and mum made this bag like it was when it was right when Lulu was like two I think mum came over when she was two and she gifted me the year before a sewing machine and I had looked at it 
or two years before, when Lulu was born, she'd gifted me the sewing machine. I hadn't turned it on. I just looked at it because I was terrified of it. And um, so that's 14 years ago. And anyway, I fancied, I fancied making things. That's when I first started and I made these bags and I couldn't understand what a gusset was. And mum had to tell me what a gusset was. Um, and I bought all these books to teach myself how to sew um, and make bags. I was determined to make bags. That's what I was about. Um, and so anyway, mum stitched this piece and I stitched it up into a bag and I stitched on the, the pom-pom trim, the onion, tr you know, onion, little onion ball trims around the edge of these bags. Not that you'd ever use it, but Mum will use the bag to carry her sewing things around, her embroideries and stuff like that, whatever she was working on. So um, that was one of my first things. I was just so impressed by my mum and I thought, oh gosh, I'll never be able to do anything like that. Anyway, long story short, she's very excited. She's getting cracking and she's like, how, how do I attach the pages? And I said to her, well, we're gonna do a three hole pamphlet stitch. What's that? Well. You stitch it in, Juju. Oh, good, we're stitching the pages in. I can manage that. And I'm like, well, don't worry, I'll show you. I'll show you how to do it. And if you really don't want to go there because you have to measure the, for the holes, well, I can stitch them in when I come eventually get out there to visit. So I'm very pleased she's going to be making one. Okay, see? So just do a few details here and there. Um... So that's that. Now I'm trying to think if there's anything else I might need to show you in the embroidery aspect. Then I've got to attach my trim. I saw it flying around here. As I, I said, I did go and put everything in the box. Now this is going to wrap around that bit there. And I think I don't want that really to go around the back. So I think I'll, I'll snip it off there. That's going to wrap around the back, this bit here. I think that does wrap around the back, that bit. So that's it there, and then that will go here, and I'll snip that off. And I'll probably, I might stitch that, I'll stitch that on with this thread here, I think, will I? Or I could use um, this one. Let's have a look, not that. Oh, that needs to go back in there. Just can, can I get it, can I get it? Excuse my arm, let's see this one. Um, no, that's the wrong colour. I do have a yellowy colour. Here we go. I've got this colour. I think I'll stitch it on with that one. I'm going to do seed stitches. I'll show you those. Those of you who um, don't sew. They take a while, but I feel like I'm just going to do little. I can't help myself. I really can't. I just feel like it needs stitching on it. It needs a little bit of stitching. Just little teeny tiny ones will do. I'll have to sit and do that in front of the TV. It's going to take me forever. I want to lift that out. I don't want to do it there. Stitch that down. Not that I do anything really in front of the TV. By the time TV time comes along, I'm tired. Oh, I think this is going to be lovely. And it's so much fun. It's just fun to be random. And do, what it, do it just because you feel like it. There is the hashtag on... Um, on Instagram, which I just love, love the wording of it. Do it for the process. Just, yeah, I love that. I think Robin Marie uses that one. I love that, that saying. It's kind of like a saying for me. Could be, become a bit like a mantra. Do it for the process. Just do it. Do it for fun. Little teeny tiny stitches. I think that's going to be lovely. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling really excited about this. Very, very excited. Yep, it's all happening. I'm feeling pleased with it. I hope you ladies are enjoying it. And gentlemen, if there's any gentlemen, I should I should not be exclusive, like excluding any anyone. So much fun. I wish I could sit all day and do it, but I can't. I haven't even touched my block. I need to do that. I haven't done my tea dyeing. That I don't know when that's going to happen. I will get it done eventually. What did we do? And oh, we did printing on fabric to this time, so that's all right. I did go out. I did purchase. So what I've done, guys, is so some people use freezer paper for the printing on on fabric. Like freezer paper, you just iron. It has a sticky side, and you put that side on the, where the fabric is. It. Lots of people use it for applique. 
um, to do the, they glue it to their fabric and then they crease their fabric around the shape. And so that way they don't need to needle turn to do the needle turn applique. It's just ironed down. And then you remove the paper because it's removable and it doesn't leave residue like the heat bond light that leaves the glue. The, the freezer paper doesn't. So some people glue their paper, I had forgotten about that, to the freezer paper and then put it through their printer because it becomes like fabric paper. So I bought some of that because I didn't have any and I thought I'd give that a go because it might be less fussy than, um, you know, spraying. Because you, when you spray, you've got to, I put it in a box so I don't get the, you know, the spray glue all over the place. Um, and sometimes it's a bit dicey, you know, it might not stick like, you know, you get a fold or a crease or something like that. So I thought I'd give the freezer paper a go. But I also bought, um, and that's quite expensive, so I don't actually like buying it, but I did buy some just to be fast. I bought some of the inkjet um, fabrics. You can buy inkjet um, fabrics that have, are backed with paper, so it'd be a bit like the freezer paper. Um, and you put those, and they work really well, and then you can wet them and iron them, and then it becomes permanent. So that's the bonus of those. However, the uh, the the fabric is not is i repeat is not the loveliness of the hemp the finer hemp's not the not the coarse hemp's the finer hemp's so that's the downside you're not going to get the lovely texture that you get with the hemp's and the linens so that's why i bought the freezer paper but i did buy it. and they're, they're also very expensive i bought some just because i want to have some quick fixes uh to use um, but they are expensive. So there you go. That was a long chitter chatter, wasn't it? And here we go. I've nearly finished. It's so relaxing. And I'm just going to fill all, it all in with seed stitch with this lovely, very pale, yellowy sort of colour. So that's what's going to happen there. we do have large expanses of just plain fabric and sometimes we just can't leave it plain yeah I like that okay so we're going to, I'm going to do a bit more embroidery here I'm going to decide if I'll add a bit of green I'm going to add my trim and then once all of that's done I'm leaving the selvage mum asked me are you leaving the selvage on yours and I love the selvage so I am leaving the selvage yes that's the selvage um, any other questions that mum asked me? Oh, I know what she was saying. So just a minute, let me grab my pages. So um, actually mum showed me on her on, on, the, on Skype that um, actually her pages are perfectly fine for the way she folded her piece of file folder. Um, so just say just say you you wanted to have a wider one. So you would fold your pages, you know, like that, so that they could be wider, and then and then glue them, glue something else onto the edge of them to extend the page, if you know what I mean. So you can fold the pages like so and have like a nice long narrow one like me. And mum mum's gonna do that, she quite like that look. But you could also fold your pages, say, just say you wanted it this wide, you could fold your pages like that and then attach a piece here there were plenty of other bits and pieces in the in the bundle or you might have some things in your own stash and you can attach them there and extend the page so it's like that so that's I, I wanted to say that I thought that was an important point um, for that um, for the project and I'm just wondering I might just pause the video quickly and go downstairs let me just finish this little section here I just like to finish my thread off that's why I keep on going. I just want to finish it off. And I might just head on in here a little bit. I won't put too many in there. Just very randomly. And come down in this section. Oh, so yesterday I did start, I was going to, I'm putting to, so I did gift my mum for her birthday, but I sent it to her six months late. Um, <laughs> Uh, I did gift her a wonderful bundle 
that had these amazing Victoriana things that I'd never seen before. And I did ask mum, I said, mum, is it, I'm, if it's all right with you, I'm going to scan those because I don't have them either, the originals. They're amazing. And so, um, so yeah, I'm putting together a bundle and I have some things that I got at an antique market and they're really lovely. So I'll put a digi just in case, you know, they can be used for other stuff as well. We might not need a digi for this because, but if you're making more than one, you will need a digi. Okay, so that's that. I'm just going to pause you and I'm going to whip downstairs. I might even open my blind and see if the sun's still shining in and we might have more light. So I'll be back in a sec. Yay. Sorry, I just ran up two flights of stairs. Can you see that, guys? We've got light. I've been able to pull the blind up. Oh, right. Had to go down two flights of stairs. I did stop at the laundry on the way and put the dry on. Look at these. They were, they covered their books. See, that was a book. Look at that. With this beautiful old document. Looks like some sort of, let's open it up. They've even snipped out the corners. Some sort of, um calculations i'm just trying to see sp i'm just spares there i think that says which means expense yeah so they i mean they covered books with these antique documents and it's rag paper so i was gonna actually i haven't showed steffi look see volume something storia history volume one let's see this one i'm gonna ask steffi if we could do something with these i love them I mean, most, if an Italian saw me, like any of my Italian friends, they'd be like, you're bonkers. 1795, guys. They've used a 1795 ledger something, that's Steffi, ledger something to, to cover books. 1795, 1796. Um, Cassazione. Oh, uh, Cassazione, I get, I think it's like, you know, they had money to give someone um i i really can't read it could be written in latin i don't know but that see there's another one that was a book and it's got writing on that side and that's bassinelli storia volume one i think there might be more i think i put them all together bocce something i reckon they've that that looks like more modern writing to me I reckon that's in the eight, late 1800s or early 1900s. I don't know. I do notice a difference in the writing. It's still, it's, see, they're all the same documents because this is the same handwriting as the one before. I just think they're incredible. I just couldn't believe it. There were some that were really ruined that I I, I, I don't know what I did with those. Um, Ali, Ali Monda, volume one. It's the same guy. I want, maybe they were their family. I want to say they might have been their family ledgers or something and they just used them to cover books. There's another one, Bacardi. I think I've heard of that before. I bet my mother-in-law knows. But I mean, look at look at them. Look at the state of them. But they're documents to cover books. Imagine covering your kids' school books in, in, in antique documents. That would be really something else, wouldn't it? I mean incredible oh here we go here's one this is a newer document um and this was used to cover see this was look at that used to cover a book looks like the same same people the same handwriting sophia panzer it says and then this one i mean this is me i you, i mean people think i'm terrible because i rip things up but look at this 1869 i couldn't throw that out how could you throw that out look at that Catania's. Oh, these came from Sicily. That's right. That's where he gets them from. And they uh, they really do arrive in the biggest state of disrepair. I can't tell you. Um, but I just think they're amazing that they use these beautiful old documents to... I guess they'll say that about me. She put those... Look at that face. She put those documents in those books. Terrible woman. That's what they'll say. Her nasty piece of work as my mum was. She's a nasty piece of work. She's, you know, when my friends were mean to me, mum, mum, or someone was mean to me, not necessarily my friends. 17, 91, 17, 92, we're getting older. Um, 
my mum would say she's our nasty piece of work. I like that expression. I think I've used that to Lulu when someone's been mean to what a nasty piece of work that one is. Okay, so there you go. That was a bit of excitement for you. Okay, right. Oh, now I'm distracted. So I'm going to go on and do my stitching here and then you'll see it in the next video. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, what did I what did I say I was going to do in here? Can anyone remind me? That would be fun, wouldn't it? If you could. I was going to put document, I think something or book page i was going to put book page i don't want to do gluing on here but let me just go up my treasure box because it is a treasure box it's a fruit crate it's a plastic fruit crate look at that this one there. my mother-in-law gives gives us veggies in and she brings them over in these crates and they drive me bananas because i'm full of them but they are useful for carrying things around in now i'm going to i was going to use a piece of this wasn't i i've got one piece there you can't see what I'm looking at. Or a piece of this. This is what I was going to use this one. I thought maybe. And then I have these bits and pieces that I can use. And that, I'm not going to throw any of it out. It is all going to be appreciated. At the end of the day, it will all be appreciated. Um, oh, I just love it. So I'm just rifling through. Off camera, I'm rifling through looking now this is a fragile piece that piece i don't know what will happen to that okay i'm just overexcited by the whole thing so i think i think what's going to be lovely is i'm going to have this done in here it is actually perfect look at that it fits nearly perfectly on there um i think i'll put yes i'm just going to glue that on i'm going to lock it in I'm going to move my um, stitchery mat away. Um, we won't do any more stitching on camera for that, I don't think, unless I come up with some fancy new thing that I need to show you. So we'll just slide that on over there. Luckily, we've got space to do that. And I'm going to grab my glue stick. Glue stick, where are you? <laughs> I've lost my glue stick. Oh, no, it's right here under my beautiful papers. Righty-o. Here we go, get some paper, some new paper, and, oh, the noisy one's home. I call him the noisy one because he, he talks on the telephone very loud. It's because of the connection with his phone, the company that he's with. It's a very bad connection here, and so he feels like he needs to raise his voice. Okay, just going to put plenty of glue. I may decide to do hand stitching around. I haven't decided that yet. I do need to go and find the other bits and bobs too that I um I didn't actually like put them in packets like I did for the kits. Um, for me, I've probably got them just randomly floating around <laughs> so i have to see if i even have any of the things that i provided for for who for the kids oh look you're so noisy mister i think i might fold that up let's fold that up and you're quite zoomed in guys for, for the stitching because otherwise you can't see so i'm sorry if i'm going off camera let me have a look i'll try and stay on camera so just glue your big piece of paper down. Just glue it down. Lock it in. Now let me see. Where's my stitching? I just I just like to keep double I just double check all the time what it's going to look like. I think because I just like looking at it. But that, you know, you do that just in case. So this is going to go over the page. I'll probably do some stitching there. I might do just some big See, I folded that up there. That's good. That solves my problem that I stitched that a bit short. But I could attach a bit of something there. You never know. I don't want to fold it while it's wet, but um, that's what it's going to look like. And then here, this is what I'm interested in seeing. So that I will glue down with my white glue, my PVA glue, because that really holds fabric very well when I glue down the whole thing. So I just wanted to see. But I might create a pocket. Um... Where are my goodies? Let's have a look. Um, 
let me just grab do i have one handy i do i know i do but i just can't see them oh here they are they've fallen on i'm getting into a mess you see i need a it's handy to have a paper, nice dog ear paper, paper. I don't want to lose that either. Oh, that could go in on oh, a pocket. Not this. Oh, gosh. I'm all over the place. Where's my fabrics? Here they are. Okay. I don't want to fall off my chair. <laughs> right. So this is going to look like this. Let's just put it on more or less how it's going to look. I'll clip it down there. So it holds on. Okay, that's good. Right. And then that's the centre there. And so I could decide to have some sort of pocket. Um, I don't know. I like this one. I like the selvage on this one. I think I like this one. I might make that into a pocket. I might even have that go right, just have that, like glue that down. I don't know, am I going to have a pocket in the back? Don't know. But anyway, this is going to be my pocket. What you could do, because this is fabric, it should be fine. I think it'll be fine. I'm going to trim that down there. Let's just put a crease. I'm going to keep it in inside my central thing. So I'm going to trim that. I'm done, I'm deciding to do it right right now. That's it. that's it. It's being done. So that excuse me, it's crooked. Not that you'll notice because the pages will be stitched in. So before I decide on any of my sort of um, pages or anything like that, I'm I'm working on my cover as you might have noticed. But you can work on it any order. You might like to work on your pages first, but I like to see what my cover's looking like before I decide what my pages are looking like. So that's going to, that'll all be glued down. That's going to go there. I'm wondering if it might like to have, I don't want to cover that flower though, do I? Is that the back? No, that's the front. Okay. So that's going to be my pocket. I don't want to put that there. Do I want to put it down there? No, I don't think I want to put that at all. Um... Isn't that beautiful? Love it. It's all just lovely. Um, let's just bring the box up. Not that you'll be able to see because I'm zoomed in, as I said. But I just... Oh, this is too hard. Let's just pull out some bits. See, I don't have all the embellishment things. I did put some other embellishment things in for you guys. So, like this could hang down. Oh, I like that. If I were to do something like that, I wouldn't put that up there because that's just going to... I know it's not for writing this thing, but that would be too much. But I could have it hanging down there, and I do quite like that. Oh, yes. I like that. I do like that. So that's my... what That's, that's going to happen there. That's what I'm going to do. Now, also... Oh, no, I can't do that. Hmm. I wanted to stitch this pocket on. So let me think about that. What I could do, see, I would like to stitch my pocket on by hand and not glue it because it has more chances of staying on. We're not using the machine. Well, I'm not using the machine. You can decide to use the machine, but I'm not using any sewing machine. So I'm thinking I'm going to glue this piece down. Okay. Then I'm going to stitch this on. I can put a tiny bit of glue. Um put a tiny bit of glue just to hold it in place and then I'm going to hand stitch it on and and then I will glue this down can you please remind me guys when I start to do my gluing yes that's what I'm going to do because I'm I don't want to have my stitches going through this I don't think so and then although I would like to stitch maybe down here as well the logistics of it all is quite tough. I could just stitch to there. I don't want to stitch into my pocket then. You see, that doesn't work. So I'm going to have to make a choice. I prefer to stitch on my pocket. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stitch on my pocket before I glue this down. So that's what's going to happen. And I'm going to stitch this on as well. I'll trim off 
that extra bit but I am going to stitch this on here and then I will stitch it all down so that's going to be there on the inside and then afterwards you know you can then put your yeah, little nice little things in here see this is why I'm keeping these because they are just gorgeous and they can slip into pockets and things so there we go and then we need to do this bit but I haven't decided that bit yet I really haven't. Oh, we've got beautiful um, papers as well. I'm really going with these mustardy colours at the moment. So, you know, maybe something like this. Something like this could attach there. I could have a little strip up here if I want to. I might tear it down. And I'll, um, I don't know if I want a pocket there or not. I will decide that. I will decide. I haven't decided that yet. Um... Aren't they just beautiful? Beautiful papers. Really pretty papers. Um, yeah, I haven't decided about those yet. But that's how I am progressing. So I think I'll end the video here because I am a bit all over the place. Uh, but that's, that's the next steps. I'm going to finish the embroidery on here. I'm going to attach this. I need, I've lost my other trim. I've got to attach my other trim there. I don't know if I've gathered it up here. No. It's probably under over there in that mess. I'm going to attach my other trim there, finish all my embroidery here, and then do my pocket, stitch my glue that down, stitch my pocket on, and then glue this on. And then I can take it from there because I still want to do a bit more of something on here as well, but I haven't decided yet. But I need to do like one step at a time, and then the next step follows, if you know what I mean. Like I can't decide all of that first. I need to see how it looks and then it comes to me what's next now I can fold that it feels like it's drying it's not I mean I haven't even folded it even it's not even even but I don't worry about it okay so I hope you enjoyed that um, I think I will see you again tomorrow so thank you so much for watching and have a great day bye